AMD's next generation GPUs are going to be really fast. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Ares Game and their AGS 750 power supply. The AGS 750 is a 750 watt 80 plus gold semi-modular power supply that features great looking black modular cables, over power and over voltage protection, a silent 140 millimeter fan, and best of all, a 10 year warranty. Additionally, the AGS 750 comes with enough cables to power all your devices and they even include the screws and nice black zip ties for cable management. So if you're looking for an affordable and high quality semi-modular power supply, click the link in the description below to find out more. So recently some images of what appears to be a next generation AMD GPU were found over on the website Free Patents Online and if we take a look at the images here we can see what appears to be a chiplet design and if this does end up being the design for the RX 7000 series GPUs, yeah we're going to be looking at an incredibly powerful GPU as this GPU could easily have double the amount of stream processors and definitely would be able to achieve very high clock speeds considering that they wouldn't have to bin these chips uh, quite as well as a monolithic design. But before we talk about this design any further, I want to real quickly just talk about why a chiplet design GPU is just such a huge deal. So uh, typically in the past how GPUs have been created is that you'll take a silicon wafer and you'll start cutting out monolithic GPU squares out of that silicon wafer and you'll design these GPUs based on how well they yield. Now, how well they yield can depend on, you know, who you're going through and how mature the whole process is, but typically there's kind of a maximum size in which you can print of a GPU. So if you take a look at, say, the RTX 3090, you know, NVIDIA probably couldn't make a GPU that's really too much bigger as they would start to run into yielding problems where uh, there would be areas of the GPU where too many of them would have defects, so it simply wouldn't be able to either clock as high, or if it did clock as high, you'd have to require a whole lot more power, and this is uh, what binning is for is they'll take essentially the best GPUs and they'll use those towards the RTX 3090s and then they'll cut down the ones that didn't quite make the cut and they'll turn them into say uh, RTX 3080s whether or not it won't clock as high or maybe there's uh, pieces of the GPU which are altogether defective not allowing it to have the same amount of stream processors you know either way that is going to lead to a situation where you know even if they do produce a bunch of RTX 3090 dies only a certain amount of them are going to actually make the cut however if you decide to do a chiplet design you can actually cut a whole bunch of different GPUs out of it and you can kind of connect them together like Legos and in that way there won't be quite as many giant GPUs and if they're smaller GPUs if there's ones that are defective it's actually a lot more cost effective to put together the ones that did work into one big GPU and then take the ones that weren't as effective and use those as smaller GPUs or maybe you connect those together to make a uh, slightly less good version of the say 7900 XT you could have like a 7900 XT you could have a 7800 XT and then maybe you start taking the really small chiplets uh, that normally you'd put two to get of them together to make a 7900 XT. Uh, maybe one of those could be a 7700 XT as it'll have exactly half the amount of stream processors, assuming that they all work. But in any case, yes, this is why a chiplet design is absolutely huge for the GPU industry. We already saw this going forward with Ryzen, the first generation of Ryzen processors. We got only one chiplet uh, and then moving on to the Zen 2 architecture. Now we have multiple chiplets where you see a 12 and 16 core processor that simply wouldn't be feasible or reasonable to produce on just one chiplet. Well, they can take a uh, two eight core chiplets and make actually 16 core processors that way whereas Intel with their monolithic designs you know it would just require way too much power to create a 16 core CPU at least on their 14 nanometer process at the moment. So if AMD does choose to go forward with this chiplet design we could be seeing GPUs that are much much more powerful they could be clocking higher there's just a whole bunch of benefits that they could be getting out of this. So now that we've talked about why this is so important let's go over to videocards.com and read what they had to say about this because they actually had some very interesting stuff to say about it. So According to videocards.com, quote, a patent that was published on April 1st, it's not a joke, reveals what AMD is planning to do with next generation chiplet designs. In the patent, AMD explains the full purpose of its inter-chiplet bridge, which would feature an integrated cache. An active bridge idea is a major upgrade over the last patent, which features a passive bridge between the chiplets. The active GPU chiplet would serve as a high bandwidth die-to-die -die interconnect between GPU chiplet dies. AMD also explains that it would operate as a memory crossbar with a shared unified last level cache, LLC. This would provide inner chiplet communication and route cross chiplet synchronization signals. The LLC in this case means L3 cache, which in the current RDNA 2 architecture is called Infinity Cache. So taking a look at the images that were shared in this article and after reading what they had to say on it, I think this actually makes a whole bunch of sense as a stepping stone going from RDNA 2 and I think this would work really, really well. I mean, if you take at RDNA 2 with the Infinity Cache architecture, that does seem like uh, the perfect stepping stone to go towards a multi-chip design or a chiplet design 
as yes, using a bunch of cash as kind of a bridge between these chiplets could actually work if they do it properly and if they do get the software correct as well. And uh, a little bit later in the article, they kind of describe how this design uh, would allow the uh, developers to kind of treat this GPU, or at least is what I got from it, to treat it kind of like it's uh, just a monolithic GPU so it wouldn't require a whole bunch of really extensive uh, different optimization for this GPU or the multiple GPUs on a substrate. So that's definitely a really good stuff to hear. And yeah, this makes sense because uh, not only have I seen previous stuff being leaked that is very similar to this in the past, but on top of that, you know, if you take a look at what AMD said it themselves about the RDNA 3 architecture, which this could potentially be based off of, well, they did mention how the RDNA 2 architecture, I believe this is what they said, was kind of like the Zen uh, moment for their RDNA uh, designs. And then the RDNA 3 architecture would be kind of like the Zen 2 moment. And of course, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Zen had just one uh, single chiplet die in there. And then the Zen 2 processors, you can actually get 12 and 16 core processors that do have two chiplets on them. Uh, so that kind of makes sense to me. It's starting to all add up. And then on top of that, you know, there was a leak earlier from Red Gaming Tech, how these GPUs would be just an absolute massive improvement over the current stuff that we have available right now. And that was in regards to say a 7900 XT versus a 6900 XT. I think you're saying numbers like over two times as fast. Now, I don't necessarily know if that's going to be exactly what it turns out to be, but it sounds like that's kind of what they're targeting. Uh, and then on top of that, we have AMD themselves saying that there's going to be a performance per watt gain of 50% over RDNA 2 once again. So all this stuff is adding up and it's starting to look like uh, no matter what AMD does end up doing, if even if they don't go for the chiplet design with RDNA 3, maybe it's uh, for the uh, data center right now and then it ends up showing its face maybe in RDNA 4. Uh, either way, I do think the RDNA 3, the 7900 XT is going to be a massive improvement over the 6900 XT. And, you know, NVIDIA better be ready and they better have a really fast GPU for the RTX 4090. I would say that they need to target at least 50% faster than the current RTX 3090 and they better get their performance per watt numbers a little bit better as well uh, because if AMD does end up getting this chiplet design implemented into RDNA 3, it's definitely going to spell serious trouble for NVIDIA if they can't get massive performance gains out of their next architecture. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the 7900 XT is going to be a chiplet design and how fast do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's going to be two times faster or do you think that it's maybe going to be uh, around 50% faster? I'm kind of betting on 50% faster, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.